Yes, it is that time. It's time for Three Guys Before the Game, episode number 369. And I'm ready to make a prediction. It may perhaps be the most eclectic episode in Three Guys history. That's quite a statement. It is. It might be the most eclectic. You'll find out as we move forward. Kind of a pro tease there too, Hoppy. It is. That was well done. Yeah. Good use of the, good use of the word eclectic. We've got another special guest for you, and she is special. WVU Olympian gold medalist Ginny Thrasher. What is she into now? We literally don't know, but we're going to find out in a matter of seconds. She's our guest, plus the news. Coming out yesterday that JT Daniels has committed to WVU. What does it all mean for the Mountaineer football program? And in addition to that, you guys and you guys collectively are our listeners. You never cease to amaze us. We said something in passing. It was simply something in passing. And it has turned in to an absolute extravaganza. An extravaganza, I say. If For those of you that are watching in, you'll see what I'm talking about. We're going to talk about what I'm talking about. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It's unbelievable. Never seen so much quality swag. Like the set is us. overflowing. Yeah. I mean, it's unbelievable. We'll get into that in just a bit. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by Caesars Sportsbook. Download, get started, get a digital $250 Uber Eats gift card. We'll tell you how in just a little bit. By Comax Business Systems, your full-service Conicum and Ulta dealer. Go to Comax Business Systems at ComaxWV.com. By the Burdette Camping Center, the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at BurdetteCamping.com. Com. I think Brad also has some new information on Burdett's signage opportunity oh, yeah. over at the uh, Skyler Howard Arena League game coming up this weekend. We'll get into that as well. But first things first, let's get to central casting, and we bring in WVU Olympic gold medalist Ginny Thrasher. Hello there, and welcome in, Ginny. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hi. I am doing well. Currently, I live in Colorado, and yesterday it snowed here. So, <laughs> snow in April. I'm surviving, really. Oh, my. So, what city in Colorado? So, I actually live in Colorado Springs, and that's where the Olympic Training Center okay. is. So, that makes sense. currently, ever since I graduated in 2019, I've been living in Colorado Springs and training full time, a full time professional rifle shooter. That's Full-time nice. professional rifle shooter. I like it a lot. So a bunch to get into. When we started to go through the bio notes on you, something hit me that made me feel instantly old. Jenny, it's going <laughs> to be six years this summer that you won yep. <laughs> the gold medal in Rio. Six years already. And it's like, wow, where does that go? <laughs> huh? Time really does fly. And I'll tell you, because of everything that happened with covid and the Tokyo Olympics being delayed, I am the longest running reigning champion for one Olympic. <laughs> oh, that's well, awesome. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I got an extra year. Isn't that really special? <laughs> yeah. Well, fantastic. So bring us up to speed right now. So you're in Colorado Springs. Yes, we, people know that's a U.S. Olympic training facility. So what, what lies ahead for you here? Yeah, well, I'm still shooting. I'm still striving to go to international competitions, represent my country well. And that's kind of my my main life right now. And I will do that for honestly as long as possible. The window of opportunity on being an elite athlete is so short, right? And I'm saying the shooting sports, it's longer than a lot of other sports like gymnastics or football. So I'm really going to stay in this window of opportunity as long as possible. So right now, you know, looking ahead to Paris 2024, which is only two years away. Mm -hmm. And then after Paris, the 2028 Olympics are in Los Angeles. So I do think it'd be pretty cool to be able to attend a home game, you know, in Mm -hmm. your home country. So that's definitely on my mind. Um, But I, I really don't know where life will take me. So I think uh, I'd like to be shooting for many, many more years, at least two more years, but we will see, honestly. That's a fantastic update. When you 
look back at the Jenny Thrasher that won the gold in 16 and the Jenny Thrasher as a shooter right now, what's the differences? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) It's huge differences. So, obviously, it's been almost six years since that happened, and I was kind of a 19-year-old, wide-eyed, just finished my freshman year in college, Um, and I really just had, I kind of had the year that every athlete dreams of, you know, from winning both NCAA championships for West Virginia, both the individual titles and the team title, the youngest person in history to do that, to immediately going to Olympic trials, to winning, to going to World Cup throughout the summer and making finals, and then going to the Olympics, winning the very first gold medal. You know, I had that year and I really didn't plan to have that year that year wasn't like you know 10 years on the world stage getting better and better leading up to that year it just kind of happened right like there was a lot of hard work there was a great support system around me there was a little bit of fortunate timing I think we can all admit that but now when I think about myself now the level of knowledge is so much bigger You know, when I think about my positions, my skills, my ability to deal with adversity, the number of experiences I've had in these last five to six years, it's it's insane to me. And that's, I think, why I'm still shooting and why it's still exciting to me is to think about who I am now, being a very different person with a lot of different experiences and a broadened perspective, you know, it's exciting to think of all that I'm capable of accomplishing now with this new growth, I feel. So it's interesting because um, a lot of people ask, uh, how did you do in Tokyo? So unfortunately, I did not qualify for the Tokyo Olympics. I was the alternate, which is a really sucky place to be, to be honest. You're one spot off of going to the Olympics. And it was, it was tough to shooting the first part of Olympic trials being in first place, and then a week before the second part, which would have hopefully placed me on the Olympic team, the entire world shuts down in a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. My rifle range shuts down. I have nowhere to train, right? So, you know, dealing with that, then the Olympics being moved, you know, it obviously was a, a tough time for everyone. I think it was a tough time for athletics, especially. And when the second part of Olympic trials finally gets rescheduled, finally gets rescheduled. It's over a year later with no matches, you know? So by the time I went um, to the second part, I I shot okay. I didn't shoot amazing. I'd been dealing with some equipment issues that had kind of hurt me. And I ended up being the alternate. And luckily the U S went in the shooting sport. So rifle, pistol and shotgun had a fantastic Tokyo Olympics ended up winning six medals, which is a very high number. So, um, you know, not all was lost there. I was uh, happy to still be able to represent the country as an alternate and still be training and ready just in case anything happened at the last minute. And now, almost a year later, you know, all eyes are ahead on what is possible for the future. Where do you keep your gold medal? (laughs) That's a good question. Did I ever tell you that time? when I kept my gold medal in my college apartment. Did I tell you about that? (laughs) No, I never heard this. No. Oh, my gosh. You guys are going to love this story. So this was maybe a few months after the Olympics. So I'm a sophomore in college. I had just moved out of the dorms into an apartment off campus, right? (laughs) And at that time, I kept the gold medal in my bed stand table. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like it's in there. It's, uh, your fingernail clippers are in there. Your, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. your, an electric candle yeah. and a gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> so one night, it's a Friday night, and I'm in my pajamas, okay? And I get a knock on my door. And I assume that it's my teammates who live right down the street, right? So I don't even look through the people. I open the door, right? And it is five drunk college students who figured out where the Olympian lived (laughs) and wanted to come see my gold medal. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Did you show them? Of course. (laughs) (laughs) 
There's a West Virginia story. You, yeah. They were so nice. They were so proud. They said, can we come in your house? I said, <laughs> no, I'd rather you stay on the porch. Yeah. <laughs> and they did. And they were so nice. And I showed them the medal. And then the next day, I went to a bank, and I said, I need you to lock this up. Yeah, yeah good, good move. Yeah. Very Solid smart. People. Solid move. Yeah, solid Very smart. move. Yeah. Although I hope, I'm sure you didn't, because you're just so much more humble than I would be in that situation. But I wish you would have worn, did you wear the medal into the bank by chance? Because you should have. <laughs> exactly. I'd go and there. I'd like a deposit. Well, <laughs> I'd like to deposit. So where this. is it now? Where is go. it now? It's not in your bedside table now, is it? No, it's not in my bedside table. So now it's in a bank in Colorado, just so I, I can go get it out whenever I need it. But I don't have to feel like anyone's going to break into my yeah, house. Yeah, but good, that's I, why it's in the bank. I was going to say, yeah. don't Before answer that, that question. it's in my bedside table. Yeah, and yeah, I yeah. thought that was the funniest story until the next day when I called my dad and I told him what happened. Oh, and my dad did not think that was a very nah, funny story nah. at all. I could. I, had I, a good ending, though. I'd good lean ending. with Dad. I'd lean. Yeah, I'd lean I would thought you were going to ask her, like, did you ever put it on and just on a Friday night walk straight down the middle of High Street like Vince McMahon? Just like, hey, well, here one, I am. I, one, I wish she would have done that, too. I thought when she started that story, I thought she was going to say, I would have just put the thing around your neck when you answer the door. Yeah, can I help you? <laughs> no solicitation. <laughs> That's got a gold medal on you. Want to see the gold medal? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Hey, Jenny, here, here, so here's my question to you. I've always been fascinated slash in awe of Olympic athletes for really kind of what you just outlined right there, that there's those just that long wait in between these huge moments when the Olympics yeah. take place. And I know there's world championships and other competitions, but how do you stay mentally fresh? How do you handle that when the competition or that particular competition, I should say, is so far away? Yeah, I think that's a really great question. And it kind of comes down to two things for me. So one is knowing why I shoot right like if I just shot for the Olympics if that was my only goal of like I want to go win an Olympic gold medal it's a long four years in between right Right. and then a lot of times people who have that kind of mentality they go to the Olympics and there's so much pressure and they're thinking in their mind you know like this is my one chance and if not I have to wait another four grueling years you know Um, And so that's never really been me. I've always been someone who's like, today, what can I do today? Where am I at today? What's my best self today? Obviously, you have to have some sort of like future focus and goals for the future and being able to have that long term delayed gratification. But like, trying to be the best version of myself today, and then again, tomorrow, and then again, in a week, you know, kind of really helps me. I guess I would just say stay in love with like the sport of shooting and not the results of shooting, Mm. right? Like you got to love the grind. You got to love going to practice every day. You can't just love the gold medal right? because you don't get the gold medal without the grind. So for me, you know, knowing my why is really important. And then the second thing I would say is you have to set smaller goals, right? You have to um, set goals that are closer that are stepping stones and kind of laying out that roadmap of obviously the Olympics is at the end every four years, but you can't go to the Olympics unless you go to Olympic trials and you're not going to be ready for the Olympics unless you're making finals and world cups and you can't go to finals and world cups unless you are shooting nationals and shooting other qualification matches. And what do you need to be ready to perform at nationals? So really just taking it a step back to make it seem a lot closer and then you can have that perspective of like what I do today matters towards four years from now on the other hand if things don't go my way today that's okay because I have time to work within the confines of the sport right and to get better so that so that's a per, that's literally a perfect answer I don't know that you could have answered that Thank question you. any better so now so here's you know, the f- I, I've done a few interviews you could before. tell <laughs> Not the first time you've you've gone down that path. All right, so here's my follow-up to that. Perfect okay. answer, perfect approach, obviously. How do you actually live that? Is that just in you, or have you worked really hard with somebody on the mental side to get to the point where that's not just an answer you give, but it's actually how you live? Yeah. Well, I would say I'm a big proponent of growth mindset. Do you guys know what growth mindset is? No, we're about to learn. Okay. So growth mindset basically means nobody is born as an Olympic champion or the future Olympic champion. Like nobody has those skills innately. Like you have to 
grow those skills and anyone can get better at anything if they work and put effort into it. So that seems like really common sense, right? Like, oh, if I go to practice, I'll be better at playing basketball. But when you think about it, like in our culture, have you ever heard someone say, oh, I'm just not a math person? You sure. Know, yeah. 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 Everybody here. Yeah. In fact, is <laughs> <laughs> So that's a very common example of a fixed mindset. So like, oh, I'm just not a math person, you know, or the the runner who is like, oh, I'm just naturally fast. Like I was born this way. Like I'm just built different, right? You ever have anyone say they're built different? Mm -hmm. No, you're built the exact same as every other human. You work differently. You work harder, right? So I would say I'm a big growth mindset proponent, and that's something I really – kind of learned about more formula, formally and worked a lot on mentally when I was at West Virginia. Um, that's a big component of the rifle team's kind of mindset and culture and the sports consultants they bring to work in on their mental game. Um, so, you know, part of that was how I was raised, you know, with um, my family. I have amazing parents who are not athletic at all. They did not think I would be athletic at all. And when I kind of started getting into a sport at the national level, it was never, you know, some of the, the classic traps that athlete parents fall into or athletes fall into when they're in high school, we completely avoided because we weren't trying to be amazing athletes. You know what I mean? Um, so that's something that I kind of grew up with and then I really learned about more formally in college and I still kind of practice to that day, this day. And I think it's such a cool concept that I actually did a TEDx talk at West Virginia when I was, I don't know if I was a sophomore or junior in college, but I did a, a TED talk on growth mindset. Yeah. Jenny, I think that what you're talking about is the last piece that athletic teams and individual athletes have not yet embraced. You guys have. Mm -hmm. WVU's rifle program has. I maintain that WVU and sports teams at every single level lose games every single year because they are not properly mentally training themselves as mm -hmm. you have just discussed. I think when the, when the rubber hits the proverbial road and a game is on mm -hmm. the line that people wag out mentally – and that does not have to happen, but instead can be an absolute superpower that you have if you're ready to deal with it. And I think we lose yeah. games every single year because of it. Well, I would agree. And this is how I think of it from an Olympic standpoint. When you go to the Olympics or World Championships or World Cup, the top 10 athletes in the world all have the same physical level right? They've all put in the same relative number of shots in their life. They all have the same equipment. They all have positions that can shoot to a certain level. So the difference between who wins and who comes in 10th place is purely mental. And I think the mental game is the least trained and it needs to be the most trained in my opinion. And mm -hmm. now that's coming from a very mental sport, you know, rifle and, and golf, they're very mental sports, but every sport has a mental component and it's harder to train because there's a lot less instant gratification of like, you know, Oh, I maxed my squat today. Right. That's tangible. We can touch that. We can show that to other people. We can brag about it. Coach is going to put us on, you know, take us off the bench because we're doing the work and they see that the mental game is trained alone in a dark corner. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's, you, it's hard to know whether you're getting better until you get into that pressure situation and you can see it. You can control your nerves. You can have better self-talk. You can be more resilient in the face of challenges. You sound, you sound way too healthy for this broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> healthy or just smart? No, I, I mean, think just <laughs> a hoppy she. Oh, I'm using health in a, in a grand sense. I mean, that's all very, very healthy. So when you get uh, – when you – do you ever approach then dark places or unsatisfactory places and you have to then, okay, when, when that happens, okay, I know what exercises to do now to process that and get back to where you want to be? Oh, 100%. I think um, I'm going to use nerves as an example. Okay. A lot of athletes, when they're young, they think, when I become a really good athlete, I just won't have nerves. Like, 
nerves will be eradicated from my life. I won't step onto the court or onto the range, whatever, and feel nervous. I'll just feel cool as a cucumber. That's not true. Everyone at every level feels nervous. It's having the, the coping mechanisms and the mindset to deal with nerves that separates the great athletes from, you know, the growing athletes. So I would say in the same way, we're all facing challenges. Um, so for instance, I've been shooting for over 10 years now, and the last almost six of those years have been a very high level, international matches, et cetera. And a few months ago, I suffered my first injury. And it's been really freaking tough. Which was what? Like, Which was what? Bulging disc. Oh, <laughs> oh man, that's not you. You went right to it. There, yeah. <laughs> she, she yeah. didn't go like ankle sprain she didn't or anything. Tweak an ankle or no, anything. she didn't go ankle sprain. She went straight to the bulging disc. Okay, how are we doing on that? Yeah, you know, we're doing a lot better now. But it's been, you know, I probably, it, so it happened early November. And we didn't know exactly what it was until maybe end of December because most back injuries resolve themselves normally within 10 days, right? So, Mm -hmm. you know, you wait your 10 days, you don't shoot. Oh, now I have a match. I have to go shoot it to qualify for X. Oh, now it hurts worse, right? So going through that and then in January, I have basically a three-day sprint through my last match and I'm supposed to get a steroid shot in my back right after that match. The morning of the match, three hours before, I test positive for COVID. Oh, wow. Yep. So I can't shoot the match. I can't get the shot. It has to be rescheduled. I'm literally, like, lying on my couch in pain, you know, in back pain, uh, symptomatic COVID, watching my friends shoot online while I'm not allowed to, you know, how could you not be in a place there, mm-hmm. right? How yeah. could you not yeah. feel a lot of emotions there? But that's not, like, the difference is not those emotions. It's, it's what do you do next, you know? And obviously it's been really hard. So I eventually, I recovered from COVID. I got the shot. I'm now in PT. I'm on a limited training plan. My back's feeling a lot better, you know? trying to address like the systemic issues that cause the bulging disc. Unfortunately, you can't really address genetics, which is a part of it, but you know, um, just working through that, that process. And there were times I definitely wasn't feeling very optimistic about shooting and my future in shooting in the last few months. But now I have realized, Oh wait, that wasn't me talking. That was the pain talking. Mm-hmm. The, when the pain is in your head, it's trying to, you know, put you into that protective mode, right? And if the, you know, if it hurts while shooting, that protective mode in your mind is going to say, wait a second, it hurts to shoot. You don't want to shoot right now, right? Right. Right. So part of my um, mental process for for dealing with this injury is anytime, you know, I'm having a thought like, I don't want to go to the range right now. I acknowledge it. I was like, of course you don't want to go to the range. It hurts to shoot you don't want to do something that hurts but that's okay because that's not jenny talking that's the pain talking Mm -hmm. you know and just kind of like separating that way so you know working on coping skills with my sports psych doing my pt and committing to that and you know i've kind of had the realization of like every athlete has injury like have you guys ever met an elite level athlete who doesn't have an injury sometime in their career no never you know so i'm I'm honestly fortunate to not have had to deal with that until 10 years in. Um, But now I'm paying for it with the bulging disc. But, (laughs) you know, it's uh, it's getting a lot better. So, yeah, I just wanted to give that example of, like, everybody has moments and struggles. And no matter how um, eloquent someone sounds on a podcast, you know, the, the, the proof is in the pudding of, like, the actions every day. And the, the actions every day are really hard to do. So you're a forward thinker. However, I have to ask you, how much have you <laughs> thought back to how much cash you could have made if there was NIL when you were here? Oh, my goodness. I <laughs> I was treated so well in the NCAA, um, but I do occasionally think about how much money I could have made if uh, the NIL stuff was, was going on. But I'm, ha- I'm happy for the athletes now who are um, – 
you know, able to get fairly compensated for what they're doing. And I remember, you know, especially my sophomore year in college, doing so many appearances and so many interviews. And honestly, it, it takes time away from your school and your shooting and your your mental focus and everything. So the fact that these athletes who are also doing those things can be compensated and it can make their life easier in other ways, I think is a good thing yeah. within reasonable limits, of course. But um, that's one of the reasons I'm actually working with Country Roads Trust. And I'm on the advisory board for them to try to try to help move the needle in, in West Virginia for the NIL thing. Yeah, and I was going to ask you uh, about that. So with that, with NIL, we're also into this world of transfer portal. And uh, mm -hmm. quite honestly, I have no idea if performers or athletes transfer out of the wrestling program. But rifle. what, what do you, uh, I'm, what, I, what I say? Wrestling? wrestling rifle. rifle. I'm sorry. Oh, the Thrasher, <laughs> might, she might be able to wrestle too. Well, with a gun, a skilled with a gun should be pretty good. Yeah. So anyway, from the rifle program, but the point is, what is your takeaway on the ability to transfer without having to sit out, which I guess conceivably I'm assuming rifle performers could do that in advance. Now it's basketball and football are allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the transfer portal isn't as um, prominently used in rifle as it is in some of the bigger sports and the team sports. Um, but it definitely is used occasionally. So I, I don't know whether I would say it's a good thing or a bad thing that athletes don't have to wait a year now. I would say from my perspective, you know, your athlete longevity is very short, right? That window of opportunity is very short. So the fact that they can leave and maybe find a program that's more fulfilling to them from a team culture wise or performance aspect or whatever they may be looking for, you know, I, I would hope would be a good thing. You know, if not abused, I think it could be a good thing. You began as a figure skater. Your grandfather <laughs> took you hunting. That's when you started to uh, enjoy shooting and, and off you went in this career. I don't know if anyone's got the word to you, um, there in Colorado Springs, but I went hunting uh, last April and uh, took down a boar. You, Thank you. Yeah, you impressed? These guys. I have, am th impressed. Yeah, these guys have been riding me. Jenny, it was sleeping. It, well, it wasn't <laughs> sleeping. That's not confirmed. You keep saying that. That's it wasn't, not, the, guy wasn't with, moving. the guy with it you said moving. it was sleeping. The guy with you. He yeah. came on the show said it was sleeping. He, no, they say that. I mean, that, you didn't <laughs> exactly line it up like Jenny does stuff. And he, he, it, it, the thing was sleeping. Well, it might have been like something, Jenny. It was a fixed target. It might have been something like she That's shoots true. at. Yeah. So I thought, you if know. If the target's moving only a little bit, I can't shoot it. And I have two older brothers, right? So yeah. my two older brothers and me and my dad and my grandpa go hunting. And we go deer hunting. And my brother can shoot any deer that's moving. Yeah. And so he always comes up to me and he says, well, you know, I'm technically a better shot than you. Because I can shoot anything that's moving. <laughs> Yeah, but that's when you hold and up the gold medal, like gold medal, and say, "Is that right?" Oh yeah, is that right? Oh, something here. You want to see this gold medal? It's right here. You got one? No, I don't think you do. But I've got to ask you: when you do go deer hunting, seriously, this is this is when you do go deer hunting and you do get a shot. I mean, you've got to be absolute, for lack of a better term, killer. I mean, <laughs> tell me that. No, like, it's just, it's no. moving. If it's no, moving. it's not. I'm saying it's not moving. When it's just a, do you absolutely yeah. just plow them? Easy now. Yeah, I. <laughs> I do. Unfortunately, where we go hunting in Pennsylvania has been, in the last few years, kind of like ravaged by this tick disease. Uh huh. So I don't get a shot very often, but when I do, I'd like to think I hit it. So yeah, I like that. <laughs> See, I like that, Hoppy. I mean, that would be kind of like, I like it. That's always what I thought, like, when she does go out there and just go, okay, here, you want to see a little in, something? In fairness, Tony is one for one in hunting. He went he went hunting once. He shot one time. He killed one animal. One he's shot. He's 100%. That's a pretty good batting average. So then he yeah, hasn't gone back. So he's going with that. So hey, Jenny, I give him that. That's true. I retired, Jenny. It was one shot. It was done. And I went like, I'm done. Thank you very much. You That's know it. what? Leave on top. I respect that. Mike, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay, so now you've given me a massive undertaking for this summer. I'm going into – I'm diving heavy into growth uh, growth mindset. I'm going in. I'm going in, man. Yeah. Uh, so, I just I'm, – I'm getting I, to that. I feel 
feel like a lot of the things I've learned in the last 10 years of my career, you know, apply to shooters, they apply to other athletes, they apply to the whole world, really. And that's actually why I've kind of become a bit of an influencer on social media mm. as well in the last year. So I, I did not think life would lead me in that direction where I am at the range making TikToks, but <laughs> it has. <laughs> Um, so yeah, for the last year, I've also been, you know, using a lot of my time and energy as a professional athlete to kind of make a, make a splash on social media, especially in the shooting world where, you know, there's, there's not a lot of people doing that already and not people doing it in an educational way. Right. So Mm -hmm. I post a lot of things where if you know nothing about the Olympic shooting sports, you can learn about them. You know, how do we qualify for the Olympics? Like, why do we shoot an air rifle instead of, you know, an AK-47 in the Olympics? So I I talk a lot about that. If you are a rifle shooter, I give a lot of, like, really practical tips, equipment advice, things like that. And then also some, like, funny videos about the shooting sports um, so everyone can get a laugh. So, yeah, I... uh, my handle is at Jimmy Thrasher, and that's on every social media platform. Perfect. So. Okay, so I was going to ask you that. Okay, so at Jenny Thrasher, G-I-N-N-Y Thrasher, and we encourage people to follow her on social media. Well, listen, this has and been we, fan- And we hope she's cashing in on NIL now. Well, Jenny, I, I hope, well, I hope you are taking full yeah. advantage there. That is... <laughs> That is another reason as a professional athlete, good. you know, unfortunately, no matter how many gold medals you win or how good you are, if you're not in really a big sport, it's really hard to get exposure, right? Like my sport's not on TV. And although it's a really popular sport in West Virginia, because we have such a, a great history with the university and the rifle team, not everyone in the country or in the world knows what the sport of Olympic rifle shooting is or that it even exists. So that's a big part of why I'm on social media too, is that can help me expose more people to the sport, but it can also help me use my role in the sport to, you know, financially benefit. And I know, you know, maybe some people are listening and they're like, well, we don't need to pay athletes more. Well, we need to pay athletes who are in the niche sports more, right? Mm -hmm. Because so, so many people retire because, financially they just can't do it anymore the percentage of professional athletes who are making millions and millions of dollars is well less than one percent right most people who are in the shooting sports actually have to have another job to survive all right yep. amen and go so, get it you yeah. go get it you go yeah. get, you'll get as much of that as you can <laughs> absolutely all right well listen great hearing your voice again uh hopefully we'll run into each other in the not too distant future when you come back to campus thanks so much for your time and again we encourage folks to follow you on social media platforms, including TikTok and Twitter at Jenny Thrasher. Thanks so much. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you. You take Love care. You talk to you. Here. All Thanks, right. Jenny. There she is, Jenny Thrasher. That was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, incredible. I think we, uh, I think we raised the uh, the IQ level a bit yeah. from uh, past shows. I mean, not to take anything away from any past, but we're dumb. All right. I mean, she's a by. By the way, she got her degree. For those that don't know. Uh, biomechanical, biomedical engineering here at WVU, Poppy. Yeah, I, I think I knew that. Uh, she is, well, you can tell by listening to her, obviously very, very, very intelligent. And second of all, has, you know, Brad has figured out things. You know, this is how, how she wants to live her life, how she wants to be, how she wants to reach and maintain a level of an elite athlete. And it's not just about practice. It's about having the right headspace, especially in her sport. And she's got that worked out. That was the best part. I mean, honestly, that that was really good and transferable. I'm I'm gonna have my girls listen to that part in particular. The two younger daughters, that that mental approach right there, and the self talk of I'm not good at math. That that was gold. No yeah. pun intended. Well, well pun intended. I think it's good. That I was think, gold. I think you should have the kids listen in. But to be quite honest with you, I was thinking about someone else that needs it, and he happens to be seated to your right, because these are the things when what? That basically when you get into a what? stressful situation. Follow me, Brad. When he gets into a stressful situation, what happens? <laughs> he absolutely comes unclued. We get him some of this growth mindset training, and instead of screaming incessantly by himself in the studio when a guest doesn't arrive, he will handle it in a much more appropriate manner rather than scaring fellow employees. 
simply a point I'm trying to make. I think this was good not only for our listeners, I think it may have changed Hoppy's life. I, what do I want to say here? What do I want to say? I think I am, I think I am fairly self-aware. And I'll tell you a quick story about self-awareness. One time I was talking to my brother and we were having this discussion about things. And I said, candidly, I said, I'm not sure. I don't think you're very self-aware. And he said, to tell the truth, I've never thought about it. I said, bam. (laughs) But I think I'm pretty self-aware. I think I know when I'm misbehaving. I think I know when I'm overreacting. I think I know when I'm nailing it. I think I know when I'm doing something, I, you know, acting in a way I shouldn't be and I need to correct. So I think I understand I, I always have work to do, but I think I'm self-aware enough to know yeah. um, how, to, how to handle those situations. I mean, I'm just I'm trying to get maybe some um, – I'm just trying to get you some exercise and maybe they'll take away the – stop. slow down the blind rages. I just no, think I don't have blind rages. What do you think, Brad? I don't. I, I'm on his side. Sometimes you got to lose your mind. <laughs> there are certain situations that warrant you got to lose your mind i'm on kerchival's side here well i'll go with you on that too right oh i'm I an mean, advocate yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah please yeah, sometimes Just you gotta, not, i mean when when i mean there not are t- often not continuous not constant you're saying like every once in a while you got to lose your mind pacino and the son yeah, of the woman yeah that was excellent that was good he got rid of it yeah right? there are um and and i tell you also <laughs> it's okay to feel bad sometimes she talked about that. Yeah, she did. I thought that thing about the pain is the one that's talking to you, not you. Talk- yeah, that's you know, awesome. And I've, I've, I've tried that, and I, that's hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your pain, the whole, that's the whole thing. Your pain is not you. Yeah. Except, like, my pain is not mine. But, man, it really hurts. <laughs> the, the, daily, the daily wind grind, enjoy yeah. the process, Nick Saban type stuff, that's what that is. I, see, I, th- I think that's really, really good. And, and I get it and buy that. The, the doing it's the hard part. Sure. But that's really good for a lot of people when, you're, when most of your life, you're, you're, there's not going to be a huge moment coming today. Right. How do you still get through the day and yeah. have success in your daily life, whether you're shooting, running, or just going to work every day? I thought, I thought she was excellent with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's really good. good. That's gold, Jerry. That is gold. Three guys before the game brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center happen to be the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. Visit them at Burdett camping.com Skylar Howard the former Mountaineer quarterback will begin his arena football league career this weekend and he is playing in West Texas for the uh, war what war birds war war birds what is it Taylor war haw what is it birds Birds. war birds I mean well you don't believe when I say war birds now you're gonna go check with Taylor who's who knows what Taylor's doing out there Taylor's been on a hot it's a shock that Taylor's yeah, been, been on a hot streak. Hey, he's been he, on a hot streak. On a, I mean, well, that may be. I mean, I just told you it's Warbirds, and you got to go get three yeah. other sources. I'm leaning toward him a little bit lately. But anyway, you got well, then, of, then I need to I need to quit. You if go. that's if that's where we are. <laughs> uh oh. Then I need to. I need Fred, to Fred, let's I'm get done. that headspace. No, let's get that headspace. So when the Warbirds out. play this weekend, they're in El Paso, based out of El Paso. Uh, there's going to be a Burdette camp. This is not a joke. There goes. There's going to be a Burdette camping sign hanging. At the <laughs> arena where they're playing because Burdett Camping went out and bought a sponsorship. <laughs> this, I'm, this, I'm not being funny. Uh, Phil Abbott, who runs Burdett Camping, called the owner and said, we want in. And so there's going to be a Burdett Camping <laughs> sign in El Paso. How do we get a sign of that? I mean, a, a and, picture of that. Efforting. Oh, it's coming. Efforting. It, efforting? Come. Okay, very good. You think Cricky's calling that game? How would he do it? He'd probably say, here's Skylar <laughs> Howard dropping back. He throws to the far side through the receiver's fingertips, incomplete, and it runs into the sign from BurdettCamping.com <laughs> where they offer you the only warranty forever RV dealer in all of West Virginia. It's second down in 10. That's probably what he would do. I do think it's co-branded, though. I think you're underselling that a little bit. I think there's some three guys. Uh, oh, there is? I think I believe it's co-branded. I mean, this is a major moment in the. Uh, I mean, the goal is to sell a camper. I mean, we're selling an RV out of in El, out of Paso. El Paso. That's the goal. But I do think there's some co-branding. Do, do you think that? Do you think that Skyler's getting ready to take the shotgun? He looks up and he goes, "What the? What's that, what's that you guys? <laughs> I hope. That'd be awesome. Hey, we need to reach back. Wasn't out. that thing I was just on with those three clowns? Was, was that, that the that, thing I was why, just on? Why are they here? <laughs> I'll tell you why they're here. This is an all-time activation by it Phil. Is. We've said for we've said for years now how good he is, and they are at the activation side. This is an all-timer. You want to no? Well, yes, correct. You want to talk about activation? For those of you that are watching it, you see that our set looks different today. 
because in front of the set, we have got three of the most beautiful coolers. We've got a 22 quart, we've got a gearbox, and we've got a round cooler as well. And then on top here, we've got we've got coffee tumblers and wine tumblers and hats and shirts. And you might be saying to yourself, "What in what what is going on?" Okay. So how many times have I said on this program when it's come up, when it was in its infancy, which will be five years old in August, I said we can move product on this show, right? That's what I always say. Like, trust me, we can sell stuff on this show, and we've got. A million and a half plus downloads, and and it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. So you may remember a few episodes back where I, I, I brought up a story about Curtis Fleming, the well-known trout fisher who's got Fly Rod Chronicles. And I told the story about, I asked him, hey, you're a Yeti guy. How about some Yeti? Give me some Yeti stuff. Like, come on. Because I know in his garage... He's got about 2.5 to 2.8 million dollars of Yeti gear unconfirmed. And he comes back like 2 weeks later and he gives me a gives me a styrofoam hat with a Yeti logo on it. And I and I went, "Thanks Curtis, I think. Like how about a little something for the effort?" Hey. So, I get this email about a week ago now from a three guys listener in Houston. And he identifies himself, gentleman by the name of Chris Harbarger, and Harshbarger, excuse me, Chris Harshbarger, and he says, uh, hey, listen, love this show. I'm from Princeton, West Virginia, graduated from WVU electrical engineering degree, 1993. I mean, Jake the Snake, Darren Studd, still undefeated season. Love the show, da, da, da. He heard you mention that you were looking maybe like for some Yeti stuff. He goes, well, I happen to own a sports sporting goods company that does kayaks and coolers and a bunch of other outdoor stuff. So I went, hmm, interesting. So I started looking and it's like a big, big company. So I said, yeah, man, like, uh, sure. Well, we'd be more than, yeah, what do you, yeah. He said, I'll send you some. So, you know, you think you're going to get like small little Amazon box. You know, if it was uh, if it was Curtis, you know, probably come in a cupcake holder, something like that. <laughs> so instead today, I come to work like the, the ladies upstairs. They're all concerned because the door's barricaded. I can't get through the door. Got boxes in front of the door. Who do sports? Who do sports? They said, what is all this? Who do sports? And I said, that's my guy, Chris Harshbarger. He said he was going to send some stuff. Well, look, so I got onto the website. And this is the reviews from people. Yeti Schmetti. They say, there's guy, this guy did this test. Took a Yeti, took this, put ice in there, left it on his back porch, and then checked it like days later. Guess what won? Hoodoo Sports. Still ice in there. <laughs> like, like Yeti's melting. My man Hoodoo. My man Hoodoo Sports. So we're shouting out today to Hoodoo Sports. They're American, right? We got. I got. So I'm going. You know, I'm using the 22 quart. I'm using the 22 quarter this weekend. I'll get a full review back to you on Monday. Um, got coffee coming. You guys take that. We're gonna have, I'm gonna have some coffee too. And got hats stuff. They got the whole thing. So there's a West Virginian that has started a company. We congratulate him. He's in Houston. So we're probably gonna meet him when we go to play the Cougars. I would think. When you think so? When we get in the I'm league, sure. When they come into the league, we'll do that. But that's good gear, man. That is it's beautiful nice. stuff. That is really that's nice stuff. None other than I checked in with Chris Lawrence, the outdoors guy. Yeah. And I said, "Hey, check this stuff out." And Chris called me back. He said, "Hey, boy." <laughs> he said, "I'm telling you what, that is the real deal, right there." Now, if Chris says that, yeah. And he said, "We could," and he told me that this is one of the biggest kayak sales places in the country really yes people buy kayaks a ton of kayaks potomac highlands and also over in the canal valley he says big kayak area so they sell them so we're we're i think we call ourselves uh, we, they call these we're on pro staff now i think that's what those guys say they're on the pro staff for hoodoo sports that's nice chris 
Chris Harshbarger. Very good. Who do sports? Well Who do sports? That's, that's a lot of stuff. That's uh, two O's next to each other twice. Well done. Ready for, uh, oh, cheesy peasy. Story of the day, right? So let's get into it, boys. JT Daniels, Kerchival, by the way, Senator. My boy spent some time last night. He dug in to JT Daniels like he got in to it. All I right, did, I, you get I, to go. You get to go first. Wait, we gotta get you a little billboard music here. Hang on, a little something. Again. Take it away, Hoppy. Everything you know about JT Daniels. Well, I, for, I want to start someplace else. <laughs> but, but but about JT Daniels, that, actually, Brad and I talked about this yesterday, and Brad got me interested in thinking about this. Is so I can't claim credit for the idea, but but the idea of changing the narrative. Because WVU football was on a bad narrative with not only how the season ended, uh, but with players leaving, all the portals bad. And then you have uh, Mesidor leaving, which is this gigantic story. And then Daniels commits. And now we're talking about Daniels. And we're not worried about the portal so much because he used the portal to get JT Daniels. And Daniels is a national story. I mean, Pete Thamel broke the story, like broke the story. It's a national story where JT Daniels is going. So the narrative shifts dramatically. And now you have think now you're talking about that as opposed to what the news has been, which hasn't been good. So the so the first thing is, before you get to the practical part of him on the field, is the narrative shifts dramatically. Start there. Well, it does because you get a you get a guy. I said yesterday on your show, you're you're buying a stock, a former blue chip stock, at a at a bargain basement price. You, you know, I mean, risk here. So you're getting a guy that was the number one recruit in the country at his position and a top five overall recruit when he was coming out of high school. I mean, this is massive. This, this is it's comparable at this point to West Virginia getting Will Greer. Might be even a notch ahead at this stage of it when you get a commitment. So I think it's massive from a narrative standpoint. I think it's massive from from the selling of hope. And when you're a program that hasn't won a ton, what are you trying to give? You're trying to give hope. And I think that's why the narrative going where it was going was such a challenge for that program to be able to build because there just wasn't a lot of hope. Mm -hmm. And I think this single signing changes that. I think there is hope now within this program for him what he may become, reunited with Graham Harrell, what that becomes. And then here's the other part, guys. What's he able to attract with him? Is he able to Mm -hmm. attract a high-level elite receiver that may be in the portal? What about another offensive lineman that you may need to, to fit in there? Does that change, and does he now become a magnet in addition to what he may bring to you? Now, there's, there's a lot of time left, and there's a lot of things you need to see. What's his injury status? How does he look? Is he similar to the guy that was the number one quarterback coming out? I mean, there's a lot of questions still to come. He's got a lot of ground to make up to go from being comparable to Will Greer today to what Will Greer was, a top five Heisman guy at West Virginia. Will Greer had hype, showed up, and produced at a really high level. Yes. Can Daniels do that? And that's for another day to discuss. For right now, it's massive in changing the narrative around this program, in my opinion. What I like about it is, to your point, is that he still has something to prove. He doesn't come here saying, I'm a finished product. He has the proverbial chip on his shoulder, despite all the accolades that come with him. Mm -hmm. He has to now prove that I can play a full season of 13 games, 14 games, 15, whatever it'll take, (laughs) and be healthy through that. So he has something to prove that's always better than someone who comes in and has, I've already done what I need to do. I like that aspect well, of it. Very yeah, much. he needs to show that he's the guy that everybody thought he was because yes. what's he want to do? He wants to go to the league. Sure. And so he needs to go someplace that can showcase his skills and he can produce and lead a team to wins, not only pile up stats. So you're, so you're right. This is potentially really good for both parties here. Here's a guy who, as you all, as you talked about, Tony, I mean, this is one of those guys that all his life he's been training to be a big time college quarterback to get to the pros. And started as, and as you alluded uh, to, started as a freshman at USC. Although he was really, because he finished his high school career early, was really a high school senior, right? Mm-hmm. And played as a true freshman, pre-freshman at USC. And then in the second, then first game of the second um, second year at USC, got hurt. Interesting note: when he got hurt in the second quarter of that first game, the quarterback that came in to relieve him was Keaton Slovis. 
who now is at Pitt, and they may face each That's other correct. if things work out the way you think it's going to go in the first mm-hmm. game of the season. Then he goes to Georgia, and then he gets the knee injury. And then he goes to Georgia and has the what oblique was it? oblique injury Probably there. Struggling with that oblique, had not heard, unfamiliar with the oblique. Oblique, you know, he had that it. had that injury there. So you don't know. You don't know yet what he can do, frankly. You know he's got this one unbelievable potential. He's got a big-time arm. I mean, he can throw it downfield. You look at the video, he can heave it downfield. But what can he do as an experienced quarterback with a full season if he can stay healthy? Yes. I mean, there's a lot of upside there you just haven't seen. Had another thought along that line because many have asked this question since the news came out. What about the guys that are here? What will that do? and specific to Nico Marchio. So I had this thought today. If I'm Nico Marchio, I'm thrilled and excited. Thrilled and excited. Why? Because you now are going to be in a competition, among the other the other two as well. You guys all aspire to play in the National Football League. Well, so does JT Daniels. So what better way to come in and to compete against an extremely highly touted player who also has those same aspirations and make you better every single day. Because guess what? If you ever do get to that point in the National Football League, you know what they do? They bring in guys every single year to have the highest level of competition. So welcome to the party. So that's my thought on that. What better way to serve and learn and compete at a very, very high level? It makes you better. We're seeing that with Deuce McBride in the NBA. He became extremely improved and better. Why? Because he got around really high levels of talent. So that's it. It's competition. It's sport. And that's how I would frame this up and embrace this. Yeah, and and, and quite frankly, you never know how guys are going to take it. So you, so you may be right. He may take it that way. He may not. He may view it a totally different way. I, I also think this, if you're him and you can see through this, it helps him significantly from this standpoint. That relieves a ton of pressure yes. for putting a guy that was very, very unlikely to be ready to compete at that level on day one and potentially setting up for failure and pushing that off and giving him time to adapt. Exactly. This doesn't mean Nico Marchio won't turn into an All-American here. You don't know that. What it does is gives him a chance to be ready for the moment when the moment comes. And I just think, as we've continued to say, history shows you, recent history shows you, West Virginia history shows you, national history shows you, that's just really hard to be in that position at that age. So I I do think there is some benefit for Nico. Who knows how he views it, but this could be a really good thing for him down the road as well. I thought, too, that in the interview with Pete Thamel, that the kinds of things that JT Daniels said were interesting because they really reinforce what Neil Brown is trying to do. What were they, Brad? First of all, oh, good offensive line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you're trying to, you can play behind a good experienced offensive line. Okay, that's hold there, to, hold there for one second. I don't mean to interrupt your flow. Go ahead. But let go, me interrupt go, go, your go. flow. Because I, th- I think that's really remarkable. Think what just happened in the matter of two years, guys. Mm-hmm. It went from a position that was absolutely getting you killed and had no chance and you couldn't do anything. And we talked incessantly about the struggles of the offensive line to in a short time turned into a recruiting advantage that helped you land a former five-star recruit. Yeah. That's a pretty quick turn. It's also a lesson. It's also a lesson that just because something is today doesn't mean it will be moving forward, and that's both in the positive and the negative. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so that. So so he identifies the offensive line, which we, we know that Neil Brown's been trying to build the thing from in, from, from inside uh, out, first of all. Second of all, talk to, and then Graham Harrell. I mean, that's a big deal because Graham Harrell was with him for a period of time at USC, and and uh, so there's some familiarity there. And, and third is that the atmosphere of, of this program, of this town, of this program, of what Neil Brown's trying to do. Well, those are the very things that, those are the things. That's what he's trying to build. It's not, so he is, he is ident- the reasons he's identifying for coming here are accurate, accurately reflect what Neil Brown is trying to do. That to me says, oh, okay, so maybe this is working. Absolutely right. And that's a great point about the offensive line. It has gone from starting over to now, Uh, two All-Americans on that offensive line, and everyone's coming back. And now it's a strong strong point. What did they say when they got here? We're going to build the defensive line, we're going to build the offensive line. And they have. And those have become strengths. And it did play a part in being able to land him. And 
get this at least opportunity to take over. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by good friends at Comax Business Systems. They happen to be your full-service Konica Minolta dealer. Visit them at ComaxWV.com. Their story is really simple. They want to help you because every single day we're reading and you're seeing that people within their businesses are having problems, whether it's malware, whether it's viruses, whether someone comes in and steals your data. Are you safe is the question. Simple question. Are you safe within your business networking? If you're not sure, then give them a call. They'll come in and do a complete assessment of where you guys are within your business and say, here it is. You're good here. You're all good to go. You don't need to change a thing. Or, oh, my goodness, you could really get screwed here, and they'll do it for free. A free computer colonoscopy. It's ComaxWV.com. That's ComaxWV.com. I think that's probably the best way to describe it because, you know, there's some alliteration there with computer colonoscopy. It's kind of like also going to a dermatologist. You know, well, they, they trim things. They'll come in there and snip things, snip a thing here. You know, this thing you could grow things that you don't even know, you know, are happening. All of a sudden, what the heck is that? Well, we can take that <laughs> off. We'll freeze that off. They can come in there and do that, kind of like a dermatologist, gastro uh, in, uh, help me here, gastro yeah. enterologist? Yeah, GI doc. Enterologist. Is it an enterologist? I think that you have, with Comax, I think that you've established them as the colonoscopy right. people. Yeah, probably. They're the colonoscopy people. I hope they're happy about that. Yeah, I think so. I think Bob. Bob's a good guy. If he had a problem with it by now, I probably you, would, you have, know? would have would have heard. Cue the band! Ready for some techniques? You know, like that song, Marvin Gaye, Sexual Heat. I think this does. Had another idea, by the way. Since uh, you're giving us the finger on uh, having a live get together, we want to go out in the public. We want to meet these people, and you kind of, eh, I don't know if I can go or not. I, I thought of an idea where we can just do it without you. You in or you out? In. Excuse me. In. He's in. All right, we'll move ahead on the plans. Hard to get along with. You're self-actualized. Self-actualized. Time for our texts, which have become a big part of this show. You ready for this? Texter says, I enjoyed the guest visit from Greg Jones, truly one of the highest decorated mountaineers of all time. I particularly enjoyed his opinion on NIL, especially the fact that he was a former athlete. I wish he would have taken a deeper dive as to why he felt that way and would have enjoyed knowing his thoughts on the portal. I'm so proud of him as a role model for everyone and figure all aspects of his life are in order. So to paraphrase what Greg said, he was kind of like, yeah, but not crazy sure, you know, about the whole thing. That's basically what it was. I think it's because he's a wrestler. <laughs> because like wrestlers, like unless unless they can eat metal and spit nails, that's not a, it's not a good day of work for those. So I think he might think. And again, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but he he likes the hard road rather than anything, yeah. right? Is that fair? Well, that's their life. But but here's the other thing you got to remember about folks like Jenny and about Greg that when they come into a college situation, they're not ex- they're not expecting anything because there hasn't been anything there. They're they're not the ones who have coaches making four and five million dollars a year. That's I think we have to remember that's where the NIL stuff started coming up for the football and basketball players because they're looking at the coaching salaries that continued to escalate. And the, the promotion of the hundreds of millions of dollars that are influxing in because of the TV money, and they're going, well, hold on here. I mean, the Olympic sports haven't had that luxury yeah. of being able to do that, so they just come in for to compete because they're not they're not seeing the hundreds of millions of dollars of influx. And I that's part I, of the equation. I, as well. I, I doubt Jenny Thresher has people had people around her. No, those guys came to her door, and she was she they were, she was by herself. Didn't have people around her. She had a gold medal in her nightstand, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> Josh, I've been wearing that thing to like, class. Where's though. my Where's my glasses? Move this gold medal out of the way. Get my glasses out of here. How could you not wear that to class one day? Because she's cool. Because because she, she's she doesn't have to. Because she's she's probably. She, I, I joke about self actualized. She sounds like she is in fact self actualized. Yeah, it's pretty locked in. Yeah. Josh and Mason, West Virginia. In an earlier episode, you talked about how it transfers scoring average at their previous school translates to their scoring at WVU. 
I wondered what the transfers we have received thus far averaged at their previous schools and what point total you see that adding up to at West Virginia. Do we have sufficient scoring ability on the roster between the returning players and transfers to be better than last year? So, Joseph Toussaint averaged three points. Eric Stevenson averaged 11? 13. 13. And Mohamed Wagi was his double-double guy, obviously, but at a junior college level. Josh, I'll answer the third part of your question. Is there sufficient scoring ability on the roster between the returning players and the transfers to be better than last year? In my opinion, not yet. Got to go find some people to, to, to score. I don't think there's enough there yet. Keep in mind what you're losing. Taz Sherman was a high-impact scorer. He was second in the conference in scoring. Sean McNeil was one of the top scorers in the league. So there's no one yet that's going to make you say that guy's going to put in 15 to 18 in a game. Keep in mind that Taz was at that 18 level. So, no, there needs to be more. The scoring losses over the last two years are just remarkable, aren't they? From an Oscar to a Culver to a Deuce to Taz to McNeil now. Here's what this feels like to me so far. We'll have to see how it translates. But this to me feels like Hugs saying, I am not going to sit there and watch a team that isn't tough and hard-nosed and defensive-minded anymore. If you look at those, the thing you're hearing about Toussaint is not about his offensive skill set. It's about his toughness and his defense. The thing about Stevenson, if you remember him when we've we've seen him play West Virginia, felt like a tough guy, right? Felt like a guy that stick his nose in the fan a little Ballsy bit. Ballsy guy. Not so much an elite Baller, scorer, guy. but he's a guy that's going to get up in your grill and he's going to yes. get after you a little bit. Woggy is a shot blocker and a defensive presence. It feels to me if that's where he's going, Hugs is, to remake the roster first, is I'll be darned if we're going to sit there and watch guys go right to the basket and get layups anymore. I don't know where the offense is going to go, but that to me feels like the 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 fit of the players so far. It's going to be on that end first with the defensive mindset. Following suit on that, Jeremy from Liberty, West Virginia writes, and I know you guys are in off-season mode. However, wanted to ask a quick question on your thoughts about the new players for the men's basketball team. It's enough to where the team's Twitter profile has added hashtag Press Virginia to the bio. Love the show. Thank you for always taking time to answer fan questions. Interesting point that Jeremy raises. There were a half a dozen people that sent text to us between the last show and this show saying that West Virginia has changed its Twitter profile and added hashtag Press Virginia to the bio. So I did some research on that. I communicated with three people within the athletic department. One person in the basketball office, said they had no knowledge of such change. Turned me, referred me to a marketing person. Spoke to the marketing person. He said they had no change or involvement in that. Directed me to another person. Did you get the runaround? Did Tony Caridi get no, the No, 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 no. Everyone was being, each person was being absolutely honest. Mm-hmm. Turned me over to Brian Messerly, who is in charge of basketball, sports communications. I said, uh, Mess, Twitter profile says Press Virginia. And he said, yeah, it's always said Press Virginia. It's never not said Press Virginia since Press Virginia. It never left, and it just has not been added. It's always been there. So someone has apparently thought that they just added it, but Mess said it's never been off. It's always been on. There has been no change. So, there you go. May have gotten some people excited. I think it was on, I think it was on QAnon. <laughs> so then. <laughs> well, that's how that stuff gets started. But, no. Press Virginia's been on there ever since Press Virginia. Do you want my poll results? Yes, please. This is anecdotal. It is not scientific of my Twitter followers. Causation, course. correlation, of course. Who do you think will be the starting quarterback for WVU this fall? Crowder, Daniels, Green... Mark Huell, 89% Daniels, 6% Mark Huell, 2.5% Green, 2.2% Crowder. 688 votes in, final results. Now, is that scientific? No. Anecdotal. Anecdotal. Oh, okay. Thank you. 
P1 Jason in Dallas. <clears throat> hey, guys. Loving the interviews. They're always, yeah, pretty good. Also, good to hear about the new academic incentive program. Maybe in the coming years they can dig deep and raise the amount to $6,000 instead of fifty nine eighty. That's a court. That's a court. That's because of the uh, throw in the extra twenty. A deta- well, uh, that's because of a detail in the yeah, Alston decision. There's no rules, Hop. On a recent <laughs> on a recent Phoenix trip, that's true. I had to revisit the great article and video that came out a few years back, "The Legend of the Flying WV." I was sitting at the bar, Terminal D, Admirals Club at DFW. Some guy, after noticing my WVU hat, shirt, and coaster, yes, I keep a coaster in my travel <laughs> bag, asked. So do you work for Wake Forest? What? I joked, no, but since you can't tell a V from an F, I guess you went to school at some outhouse in Pennsylvania. Uh Uh-oh. He didn't get what I meant. I also occasionally get asked sincerely if it's the Wonder Woman logo. I usually need a steam release after that one. The Flying WV has to be the best investment ever, doesn't it? For 200 bucks, we now have all this stuff. I think that's, yeah, pretty good. Love the show. P.S. Does anyone remember if Skylar Howard won a bowl game? I vaguely remember 532 yards, five TDs in a game that ended 13 seconds ago. That was, yeah, pretty good. Why he's He came back strong, yeah. didn't he? That was probably one of his best. I like the fact he travels with his own coaster. <laughs> you imagine him sitting up there, you know, you go, in those, out there. you go in those airport bars like it's always like uh, – Smokies or something, and you bring your own coaster. That's a that is an absolute baller move. That is where you sit down at a bar and bring your own coaster. Is that that's the best baller move ever? He probably would want to do one of those things with one of the Hulu sports tumblers. That's what he needs to do. Put the Hulu sports tumbler, or put the WVU coaster down in a Hulu sports tumbler. Hoodoo, 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 hoodoo. Plus, there's a guy sitting next to him who's half paying attention, kind of glances over like you do at a bar and go. <laughs> How do you get a West Virginia? And he would probably look at it and bar. say, Who do gonna beat them Mountaineers this year? That's probably what he would do. <laughs> Hello, three guys. Effective with the twenty twenty three football season. How many official power five programs will there be? Is it sixty nine? Senator, how many power fives? Yeah, pretty good. Something like that, right? Uh, somewhere around there. Sixty something. John in L.A. writes, is it true that West Virginia basketball switched back to hashtag West Virginia? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Texter says, that I, has, I can't remember what happened last show, let alone what happened 20 minutes ago, but all capital letters it says, Skyler won a bowl game to replace hello. Yes, I'm, pr- I'm petty. Sorry, Senator. What was that about? Did you say, did you scream or something, Skyler won a bowl game? You did. Oh, okay. <laughs> he wants that to be. <laughs> I don't even remember. Maybe it was a typical him. Yeah, you don't even know what the name was. Doesn't remember. No, I live in the moment. I'm like I'm like <laughs> hugs. I mean, I'm like hugs. You know, you go in my pickup truck. I got no rearview mirror. You know why? I look forward. I don't look backward. You know I don't what you have, last you have a rearview mirror. You I got no rearview mirror. Understanding when, you know what you know what a rearview mirror gives you. You know if somebody's coming up behind you, <laughs> screaming up behind you. I look forward. I'll be. I don't look backward. I look forward. Not a rearview mirror. Kyle in Martinsburg writes, hello, three guys. I take all the negative things I've said about the transfer portal back. It's great. <laughs> right. Let's go out there. Looks right. better today, <laughs> doesn't it? Never been our point. Right. Thank you, Kyle. Very well done. Thank goodness for the transfer no portal. screaming and... about culture and why give these kids the opportunity to transfer other places. <laughs> they should stick it out. Stick it out and earn your spot on the team. What does it teach <laughs> your young kids about stick to it <laughs> JT Daniels bailed on his Georgia teammates <laughs> shortly after winning a national title. Texter. Come on home. Welcome home. <laughs> uh, welcome home. Come on in. Welcome home. Well, the, uh, Brad, as welcome you, home. The portal, the portal just helped a young man to complete his college experience. The portal the giveth. That, the portal taketh. Yeah. Texter. Hello. Jeff in New Jersey. These interviews have been great. Please keep them coming. Now that West Virginia's connection is as strong as ever in the WWE, I have a challenge that you should, should, should you choose to accept it. If you had to pick one former or current Mountaineer men's basketball player and one former current or former current football player to form a professional wrestling tag team, who would it be? I'll start. Truck Brian and Owen Schmidt from the <laughs> Runaway Beer Trucks. Their finishing move 
would consist of Schmidt using a running headbutt to bring the opponent to the ground, and Truck would hit a flying foot stomp off the top rope. Any takers that want to share this dynamic duo? Let's go Mountaineers. I would say this, Jeff. If Truck Bryant was a professional wrestler, he would have one move that would be absolutely patented. That's when someone would put his head straight down into the turnbuckle, and he would snap it back as if it was just like mm-hmm. his head's on a hinge. Which is a skill. You've got to have that skill in He wrestling. has that skill, he right? How many times did he go down the lane and someone went like, and his head would snap back almost <laughs> like, you know, in an exorcism. A snap back He head. was a trendsetter with that. I mean, that became a point of emphasis they wanted to get out. I think he did that first. I saw him at the state tournament. I brought it up to him. I said, your neck all right? Tony, what you talking about? I said, well, I mean, I mean all those years, your head was going Wasn't off. Un- your- I was there with you. It was an unfair attack by you on him. Well, I, if you if, listen, you know why? If you don't attack him, what's going to happen? He'll attack you. He'll attack you. So you, you better. You come know up. what? Real good. Real quick. Let's save this for June because this is an actual topic on our <laughs> nightly show that we do. We do a nightly show every night. Yes, head six, snap. What? Six to seven Monday through Friday. No, the combo would be really good. But the the hit that Cam Thurman laid on the Duke guy under the basket. <laughs> yes. That's a good wrestling move. <laughs> A yes. lot of time you'll see guys face to face, and somebody lowers a shoulder, and the one guy just comes off his feet and hits hard. That I mean, was they're for real, acting though. a little bit. That was for real. <laughs> I mean, Cam Thurman did that, like squared up at the goals. Is that right? Boom. I'm with you. And step. Stephen in North Carolina. Cam Thurman. Hello. You three were at the top of your game with the first three summer series interviews. Great hearing from Nate, Skyler, and Greg. If I could make a suggestion, it would be to catch up with Javon Carter. Get a recent player's thoughts on the basketball situation. Curious thoughts on the impact of JT Daniels. Obviously, it's exciting to bring in an exceptional signal caller. I definitely agree with Tony's take to bring in as many players as possible. Is there any worry, however, about losing a high-caliber prospect such as Nico? I just hope Neil and the gang can keep a couple of young QBs in the program. Thanks for all the great content. Keep up the still work. Yeah, we. So, yeah, I gave you my take on that a little bit earlier. It, it, we, we need to set a number. Maybe we've already talked about it. I've, of... What, what is the number for quarterbacks that enter the portal? And Brad is the gaming guy. I would put it, though, at one and a half. I think that's the number. Uh, yeah, that's a good number. I'd take the under, but that's a would good you? number. But, but a half would be probably too easy because you'd get flooded with over money. See, so I'd you say, probably I, have to go. So you either have go to two? go. You either have to go one and a half. Yeah, but I, is there going to be two? I don't know. You might just put it at one. one. You might not do a hook and just put it at one and force people there. It's either zero or two. You're going to force a push on oh. a one. Okay. You might do All it right. one. Just go one. I might do one. That's interesting. Yeah. Force the push. I like when you talk about the hook. Yeah. I always love when you throw a hook in there. It makes me. Makes me I would, smile. By the way, I would go over. On one and a half. Or if one. it was one and a half, would you go over? Yeah. Okay. Sean in Washington State. Three guys. JT Daniels, question mark, exclamation point, question mark, emergency episode? Two people asked if we would have done an emergency episode on that. Uh, no, because we were going to come on the next day. It happened yesterday. But I do like emergency episode concepts. I think we've only had two or three in the history of the show when Dana left. And I don't even know if we build them as emergency episodes. We just did shows consecutively. Some of that was timing, though, too, because it was holiday time. Yeah, and the schedule time. was all jacked up anyway. So there weren't going to be regular episodes. So we just we had to But I do like emer- emergency. I do like like the whole concept of the emergency episode. Like We should just do one for the hell of it, even when there's not an emergency. And we'll just call it a fire drill. No, then then it, you raise it. Then, then it's a false alarm. Then, oh, then, so they, like then the, when you have a real emergency, well, I'm not listening because last time it was an emergency. They jacked us. Jack. Yeah, they jacked us. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You wouldn't want to do that. Yeah. Kyle from Morgantown writes in, I think it would be interesting to hear from former Mountaineer quarterback Jarrett Brown, who also played on the basketball team as well. Mm-hmm. So maybe, yeah, that Jarrett would be good. And that big win against Rutgers. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Remember? Final home game of the season. Oh, yeah. Been, right. yeah a lot going on around that game. Jared Brown. A lot of things had... happening <laughs> around that time. <laughs> was nice. Nice job. Shut the noise out. Got the win. A lot of noise. Yeah, that was a popular term now. Noise hoppy. A lot of noise around that. A lot of noise. That was uh that was a situation. Jared Brown had arms that were like like oak tree branches. I mean, yep. you ever he had these giant long yeah. arms. He he was a physical specimen. You know what else we could get into with him? What? Something that people don't want to talk about. I don't know what you're talking about. It was a game. He came in. 
Pat got hurt. Mm. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Before I go down that road, too. That might be super yeah. interesting. Be a good guest. We'll go get him. Zephyr at that. That's a good one. Good Taylor. suggestion, Kyle. Hey, Taylor, you've been on a hot streak, dude. Let's get Jared Brown. Hey, three guys, due stop, to my work. Stop works. saying that. You're going you're gonna to jinx him. He's going to have a three-interception day coming up here. Why? Because I keep telling him he's doing a good job. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one gonna, time was fine. Ride I mean, a winner. Like ride a winner, times. Brad. I, all four riding it. He said it like nine times. Three picks are coming. You think he's going to regress I think back three, to his I, mean? I mean, there's regression to the mean. There's going to be three, a three interception days. He's here. on a heater right now. Hey, three guys, due to my work schedule, it's been a long time since throwing my two cents into the Mountaineer universe. I'll try to play quick catch up. What the transfer portal taketh away, the transfer portal giveth. I believe that's in the Old Testament. Second, second transfer portal, chapter two, <laughs> verse three. What the portal taketh, the portal giveth. <laughs> Life in the big leagues, it will all work out in the end, but the latest is an absolute game season changer. I'm glad for Coach Brown. He's a good guy, good coach. Number two, $100 for that dinner is cheap. Count me in. So he's going to come all the way in from Arizona. Now that especially Hoppy knows you're going to be there. Three, McAfee was gold in WrestleMania. Popularity has to be a positive for West Virginia among the youngsters. Side note, as an old school Georgia championship wrestling NWA aficionado and like the senator, having been out watching the biz for quite some time, don't sleep on the upstart AEW. Is that a new uh, organization? Mm -hmm. What does it stand for? American Entertainment Wrestling or something? Don't know that. Aren't they more? Are they more violent. What that AEW is? Taylor, give us an answer on that. Is AEW over more, the top? More, more over the top. We'll find out. I'm just spitballing. I don't know. I should. I, I should. Then Chris um, goes into a very, very long. I said Chris. I think it's Chris. Yes, Chris. Chris. He went into this very elaborate explanation of how to sync up the radio audio to the TV when West Virginia plays so that you can hear the radio play-by-play here. And Chris, bless your heart, um, if I start reading this, people's eyes will come out of their head. So suffice it to say that you can do it, and we'll leave it at that. But I do think this. It still is a little bit of a hassle to do it. There is a an unbelievable white hot opportunity out there if someone can figure out something software wise that makes it stupid simple that a five year old or an eighty five year old can do it easily. I think there's a there is multiple millions of dollars to be made, not just at West Virginia, but across the country. But right now, it's still too hard to do. Thank you, Chris. Good to hear from you. Don't be a stranger. Barry in Bridgeport here, which is probably not his name. You guys mentioned the likely approval this summer of a proposal to allow teams to get back to 85 total scholarships each year. In other words, a yearly cap. If that's the case, and some transfers beyond the four or five scholarships we have left are available this spring-summer, wouldn't it be a good play to take them as blue shirts this year if they can truly help? In other words, borrow from next year when it's likely you're never going to have to pay it back. So Barry, which is probably not your name in Bridgeport, you probably have something there, but the three of us are the worst people to ask that is a great question for a Greg Hunter. He's sitting in the same seat Monday through Friday that Brad's currently occupying. And we'll ask him of that. We do a nightly show as well. Been on the air since 1986 from 6 until for public affairs? 7 o'clock. A little bit public longer. Public affairs? A little bit longer than that community JV interest. fiasco that, you, that you're running there. Yeah, it's, it's a, we play albums. You know, we, we let listeners write in what albums would they like us to play, and then we just play the album, and, and it goes from the one song to the next. We just, we don't say anything. Album-oriented rock. Yeah, we just don't let say anything. We just let them go. Contemporary hit radio. Song plays. Yeah. 
Exactly. But that would be a good, in all seriousness. Classic thing. country. <laughs> when we were in college, it was, we, it, was a, it was alternative radio before alternative radio. So now alternative radio means something else. It was just like you played anything. Like it could be classical. It could be acid rock. It could be uh, Broadway show tunes. It was just like whatever you wanted, it was all Which, good. of course, guaranteed that you turned off everybody. <laughs> Worst idea ever. Yeah, it was college radio, though. I don't care if it's college radio. You know, I mean, do radio. Like, be, oh, this is college radio. We're going to play what we want, dude. And then you get out and you get your first job and you go, I play what I, what I want. Well, you don't work here. <laughs> so go play what you want. Go well, home. It's, and play it's interesting, Hoppy, that you bring that up because that's what the university came to as a, uh, as a decision as well. And in my junior to my senior year, they took the station over, barred the doors, closed it and brought in national public radio. Well, so I, it went from absolute anything you wanted to this very, 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 very. Yeah, because it, it, it was a situation. I mean, it was a, nat- uh, it it was was a national a, story. It was a national yeah. story. They came in and Sean McDonough led a, uh, a, uh, an aggressive attack um, against the uh, school and the student radio station, which uh, led to some hard feelings. Um, Sean's made his way through those challenges, but he did get up at a massive spring festival when there were several thousand people and he got on stage and said some things that perhaps would have been deemed derogatory toward the university. But Sean made it through. He's he's he doing did, okay. He did okay. He's doing okay. I think the, the university should have issued a release that said, well, mommy and daddy are going to help run the radio station now because the children clearly can't do it. Ted Koppel came out. Did he come out in support of What he said was, let the students run it. And they just kept playing that promo. Let the students run it. I don't know why you got to be such an establishment guy, Hoppy. You were a college kid one day running around, lighting a fire in Sunnyside. Yeah, acting stupid. Well, you got to go through that period. Thank goodness I'm self-actualized now. Come to terms with that. Look, I I am absolutely... Students need to be involved in student radio stations and student newspapers, but you're learning to be, you're presumably trying to learn a craft that you can apply later on. So, you know, act like a professional. Yeah, I agree. I agree. You got to help kids out a little bit. Sometimes they just don't know. No, they don't. Right. Old guy said. I was going to say, I mean, I think there's more than one way to do things, too, Kirchival. Yeah. I, I understand that. I just. Things change. <laughs> and have. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by Caesars Sportsbook. <laughs> well, my day. We're giving a feast to new users. on the radio and listen to Hop Along Cassidy. <laughs> Typed out the rundown on the old typewriter in the back office. <laughs> I have the cart machine and inserted it here. <laughs> Young man, here's how you insert the cart. <laughs> Mrs. Walter Winchell. Better clean the heads on that. Uh, oh, uh, cleaning the heads on the cart machine. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got alcohol? Who's got swabs, man? Who's got the alcohol swabs? That was a big Dale Miller thing. Yeah. Clean the heads, man. <laughs> man, the heads are dirty. Clean, clean the, heads. the heads, man. It's all hissy. <laughs> Don't clean be bringing heads. that crap in here. It's all hissy. <laughs> Get some, where's the alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> how come there are no 40-second carts? <laughs> Kevin Nicholas has them all stored. <laughs> that was one of the all-time great stories. That was like it the, wouldn't mean the, anything if you're not in radio, though. That was like when they opened up Al Capone's vault. <laughs> no, it was better because it was something in there. I got to tell the story. All right, go ahead. So we used to use these things to store all commercials and music on, called carts. They were kind of like an eight-track, which I may have lost you when I said eight-track, but it was this plastic container that held tape. And these carts. How tape, like recording tape, yeah, recording and you can tape record on it. on it like the old. Yeah. Okay. So that's what everything was on music, sound bites for newscasts, anything. Commercials. Commercials. Yeah. So these carts became more and more valuable because people would like hoard them instead of erasing them after whatever content was on there wasn't needed anymore. And so we'd go around the station, like, who's got carts? Who's got carts? Like, I got this interview, and I got to pull the tape. I got to pull these sound bites. Like, where are the carts at? There's no carts. I got, like, 
15 Don Nealon cuts I got to pull. Who's got the carts? And so people would go all around the station like, who the hell's got the carts? Who's hoarding the carts? So like we go crazy, get all mad. Like who's got the carts? So like we're up and down the hall. And back then we were a little bit more lively than we are now. So me and Kirchhoff were like, no, who the hell's got the carts? <laughs> so Dale Miller, <laughs> Dale Miller, our president, he like, he got his door open one day and he's going like, he comes up, wait, hey, no. <laughs> What's the problem? And like, someone's stealing all the carts, Dale. Like, we got no carts. <laughs> what? Like, no carts. And like, it really didn't get to like a serious level until Dale needed carts. Yeah. So like, when football season came and like, we're getting ready to do Mountaineer Countdown, he's like, wait, all the carts. <laughs> So like like yeah Dale like, yeah like me and yeah, Hoppy yeah. look at each other we got Dale engaged now like it's gonna be it's gonna be some happening now if it's carts so like someone goes like I think I think Kevin Nicholas has got a lot of carts <laughs> <laughs> Kevin was the morning jock on VAQ excellent he's, jock excellent unbelievable voice you hear his voice all the time and he said well he does traffic now right on game days and they say hey, yeah yeah Dale I think. Uh, so people say that in that, in that metal cabinet over <laughs> there, like Kevin Nichols got there. He was right in the middle of that one. <laughs> yeah, so he was right There's some smack speculation. In the Taylor, maybe some speculation <laughs> that Kevin Nicholas has all the carts inside that beautiful metal cabinet. Locked. Locked. So, like, Dale says, like, where's McKinney? <laughs> he gets the late John McKinney, our engineer, and says, like, who's got the keys? He's like. I don't know, but, like, McKinney always had a tool to break something open. <laughs> so, like, McKinney comes in, and he, like, metal, like, with this big, big, huge, like, metal, like, bolt cutters, like, open it! <laughs> so, McKinney, like, loved that. He's like, crack! Open that, boom! Opens the thing up, and for six feet high, all it was was carts. Did they come spilling out, or did they stay no, stacked? No, 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 perfectly they stacked. Stay well, stacked. it's Nick. Yeah. It's Nick. Yeah, so it's perfectly He's stacked. He's OCD, so everything was, per- like you, so everything was perfectly. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of carts. And it was like you had opened up a water line <laughs> to a place that was in the desert. Like, people just were like, carts! <laughs> And everyone's running up and taking Nick's carts. And they're like, he had perfectly labeled like six seconds, burp, 13 seconds, like si- like uh, symphony sound, like everything. Get the car! <laughs> it was a feeding frenzy. It was like, I, I think it was like if there was somebody dropped a bunch of fruit and a bunch of monkeys were around. <laughs> just like st- that stands out to me this day. Got the carts. And Nick, and, and, you know, look, Nick had had carefully categorized things he used on his show. Great organization, so, sure. I mean, in hindsight, I feel kind of bad for him because that was his material. But we did need carts. <laughs> ah. And then, and then, so then, these cart racks were all filled with carts. We <laughs> had carts again, <laughs> like Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. I have so many forty-second carts. I'm so happy. <sighs> Didn't have to use a two and a half minute uh, cart for a sound. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes that would happen, Brad. You have a two and a half minute piece of tape and you put a 19 second sound bite, right? Don Nealon. Nealon says if Mountaineers don't practice, play better than they practice this week, they'll have to use two scoreboards on Saturday. That was the standard <laughs> 19 second cut. Three guys brought to us by Caesars Sportsbook right now. They're offering you an Uber Eats gift card that has $250 on it with your name on it. All you have to do is download the Caesar Sportsbook app, wager $50 total, win or lose, you get a $250 Uber Eats gift card. Use the promo code Radio Eat. That's one word, Radio Eat. Caesar's Rewards also, you get uh, closer to redeeming great benefits, win or lose, with tickets, free stays, experiences, much more. So do it. You must be 21, physically present. In West Virginia, new customers with eligible promo code only, real money wagers only that have minimum odds of minus 200. All games regulated by the West Virginia Lottery. Please play responsibly. Hope I didn't get too far off track on the cart story. That was, that was a good story. Unrehearsed, but that's what it was. Uh, texter, hello from the Eastern Panhandle. I wanted to circle back to the conversation about Tavon Austin's highlight tape and how much it's been seen. Have you guys seen the clip? About a week or two ago, a professional Call of Duty gamer 
was watching that highlight video of Tavon getting absolutely hyped up before his big matchup. Always a West Virginia connection, even in the world of Call of Duty. I did see that. It was wild. It was wild. The kid oh, really? was giving it. Kid was giving the whole deal, right? He was, oops, he was doing the whole thing. Yeah. Also, just went back and listened to Driveway Dreamer, the Mike Gansey story. An absolute great listen to anyone who has not heard it. Are there any other plans to do mini series documentaries like that in the future? I absolutely loved it. I want more. I love the show, David and Harper's Ferry. So, thank you very much. I did. We did see the Tavon Austin hype thing. Um, but from the Call of Duty player. So that was Austin. As far as the Mike Gansey uh, driveway dreamer, I loved doing it. We loved doing it. That was all Dan Loman again. We like doing those, but as I've said many times on this show, unlike public radio, which we referred to earlier, we are commercial radio, and we need sponsors. We do things if there's money to be made in it, and if there's not, unfortunately, we don't do them. The big time suck, man. Oh, the time on that was off the chart. We did that right at the beginning, maybe a month after COVID started and everyone was still home. I did all of those interviews in a closet at home. Oh, really? Yeah, I did. And it was great. I mean, audio-wise, it yeah. was great, but we did everything, and we, that's how we did it. We love doing that, and we love to do them. So if someone wants to sponsor them and say, I want more of those, we'll do those for you. Ah, uh, here's another thing about Press Virginia on the WVU basketball <laughs> Twitter. Gosh, yep. Got it. No, it hasn't changed. Chris and Weirton writes, Scopes, Hoppy, Brad, to say I'm excited about the brawl being extended four games would be an understatement. Thanks to Shane Lyons for working out that deal. As of airing of this show, only 141 more days till kickoff of the 2022 installment. Things have changed. You know, you think about the pit opener now. If JT Daniels becomes the guy, at least you go in there with a guy who has been in on the big stage. Mm -hmm. And I think that changes the entire dynamic. Now you kind of go in there and go, okay, yeah, you guys, Pitt, you got a lot of players coming back. Yeah, we get that. Okay. Let's go. And guy has 600 and plus pass attempts in a college career. So you've added experience to a room that that virtually had none. And that's not even much of an exaggeration. Real quick, though, funny thing I I noticed about the, the announcement on the Pitt game. We're back. We're back to scheduling decades in advance. Yes, yeah, we're only a year removed from. Are you guys busy on Saturday? <laughs> Man, you, you have, have to schedule. You have you, to schedule years in advance, Brad. You can't just schedule us on a whim. What do you guys have going tomorrow? Can you oh, come we'll over play. for a yeah, quick we'll game? Play. Okay, okay, come yeah. on over. Thanks. Fine. Yeah, that's true. But but it's nice to lock down that that series, Tony's, as you and I talked about. As long as you're not playing Pitt and then another Power right. Five team. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the uh, in the preseason, not the preseason, but in the non-conference. non-conference. Texter, hello. I'll go ahead and say it. With the recent beaming of a certain five-star quarterback straight to Morgantown through the transporter portal, this upcoming season is already garnering a lot of 2017 vibes. I would say is also starting to feel that way from a coaching regime perspective, just like Dana did. Coach Brown seems to now be all in on a two-year double-or-nothing run to a Big 12 championship appearance. What say you? Also, I wonder if there are any rumblings on what NIL had to do with this one. One more of a long-term play, or more of a long-term play for JT. Andrew in LR by way of Parkersburg. Where's LR? What's that mean? I don't know. Little Rock? Okay, cool. Guessing, don't know. So Typos in L.A.? No, I don't think so. So I guess here, what are the questions? Do, what, do, 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 compare this to uh, Dana going all in. No, I think Neil, obviously, well aware of what was needed and needed experience at that quarterback spot. And so I think that's it. Yeah, he's trying to build it toward making a run. No question about that. That's what you try to do every single day. As far as NIL, no one said anything as far as what specifically, but I would hope, you know, if not now, then over time that there would be some NIL. Probably something there. Lost a Zaxby's deal because of it. He had a Zaxby's deal. Yeah. They're not up here? No. Yeah. Is what deal? Zaxby's. Chicken. Sell chicken? Restaurant. Well, we sell chicken. Yeah, not Zaxby's. Zaxby's. I have to get another brand. 
That's they, a big deal. They got a bowl game. Oh, okay. We can probably get them something somewhere, right? I would think. Get them uh, tutors. How about hoodoo? Hoodoo. Can we get an NIL with hoodoo? Probably. Hoodoo, hoodoo sports, right? You want Wait, to how much is it? And, and sometimes we get all excited about things. We get all depressed about things. At least I do. You guys are more measured. But uh, how much have things changed just with this? Just saying it. Just saying it. Yeah. You know, I mean, the, the dynamic has changed. Again, the narrative has changed. The, the, the whole, Brad, the whole perspective of it has changed. I mean, Neil Brown needed this bad. Bad. And, and listen, this is, this is one, it. this is one, you don't need insider knowledge. You don't need to know the real story behind the scenes. What happened? Somebody, you can get any things you get. Any, <laughs> this is Neil Brown needed to address the quarterback room with an experienced quarterback. He went out and got an experienced quarterback. Yeah. That, that's what this was. Exactly. And it, it does help your perception now moving forward that you've got a guy that has been under center in big time moments in big time games. Now you've still got to translate that into now, now walk into pit and get yourself a win. Because that the whole narrative changes if you go in there and go one touchdown, three interceptions, 117 <laughs> yards, it totally changes. But for oh, yeah. now, it's a it's a massive step forward. Yeah, yeah. You get the W there. You come back down the interstate on that Thursday night. It'll be Friday morning by then. Be the after midnight. You're doing a total high stepping. Yes. Like, like the Ohio State band person kicking them legs up like that. That's probably how you come right straight you, down. You could probably have somebody leading the bus doing that. Yeah, probably. No, I'm, I'm going to hold on then. Excuse me? No, I, it's something I was going to say. I'm going to hold on. Just, we got plenty of time. To got a couple about. minutes before the pit game. Yeah. We got time. Hold back a little bit. Not gonna, I'm not going to use all my plays. Don't do all your, yeah. No, you don't need to. No. I'm thinking more seriously about uh, bringing Taylor onto the set. I know you're opposed to it. You think we're giving him too much publicity. But the last, last show, someone did say, hey, you guys talk about him a lot. Why not put them on set? But I'm only one vote. I know where you stand on it, Brad. So, Hoppy, this will fall on you, whether or not we bring Taylor on there. People want to meet him, hear, hear a little bit about him. You know, his background, from Winfield, home of Burdett Camping. I'm fine with it. In fact, he can have my seat. Oh, no, we we got four mics. We have a do mic we? right there next to you. Oh, yeah, we do. Uh-oh. So, now we got a problem. You, you're you're going to walk out if we bring Taylor on? You can do whatever you want. I still want him to trip, or these chairs are tough to get into. It slides out from under him. He falls. He does have some balance issues. A tough chair to get into. No one's ever accused him of being a ballet dancer, I'll tell you that much. No one's ever said, hey, Barishnikov, could you come over here and help me with that? Just hasn't happened. Well, I hope everyone has a fantastic holiday weekend. Uh, I know that I'm going to be trying out the hoodoo stuff. I've read rave reviews about it. And I'll be using it. I'll be traveling. Um, and I will give it a full test, both hot with the coffee and then cold with some things. Because I made keeps, sauce I made sauce this morning. I'll be transporting it across state lines. It keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. But how does it know? <laughs> you know what? It's magic. It ain't no voodoo. It'd be hoodoo. <laughs> All right, we're out, man. Three guys before the game. Super special thank you to Ginny Thrasher. I really enjoyed that, man. Oh, she, yeah. she opened Great. up our horizons. She opened up our horizons. Oh, my gosh. I love her. I love her mindset. And I do believe that. And I, I'm i just. Oh, guy. you're, but you, you, you're always into things like, I'm going to do this now. And you'll do it for a while. I'm going to do this now. Hey, you know what I'm going to do now? What? Shut your damn microphone off. <laughs> <laughs> Three guys brought to us by Caesar Sportsbook, Comax Business Systems, Burdette Camping Center. I cannot wait to see the Burdette Camping sign. That, that is going to be, Brad, you called it. That's going to be one of the great moments of Three Guys history in El Paso, Texas this week. The War Dogs. We the birds. Birds. War Birds. As Skylar it? Howard throws for 6, 12, and 9 touchdowns in front of the Three Guys sign, BurdetteCamping.com. Hey, Seriously, how about, if there's a, how about if we get a still photo, like, and we'll have it. And here, here, he'll be throwing, and like right over his shoulder will be three guys before the game. Burdett Camp. Hey, so it, awesome. It, are you have what? what? Taylor, text him. I mean, ask him to get a picture. We'll get of it. Him. He's efforting. We're efforting. Senators we're on, on okay. it. We've got, we've got, got resources. resources. All right, okay. we ran out of cart tape. Sorry, we're out. <laughs> See you. <ya. laughs>